Okay, I'm honestly a little nervous to do this video <laughs> because you'll find out here in a moment. So, okay, I might as well just jump on into it. I have a story time for you guys and um, I, I don't even know where like to begin. So right after the 4th of July, my husband and I went to a cabin. It's seriously like out in the middle of nowhere. It's like after you've been on this dirt road for a good couple miles, like at the end of this dirt road is a cabin. And we got there probably Wednesday, like, like maybe two, three o'clock and, you know, got into the cabin and whatnot. And then we started looking around like outside the cabin and I had this weird, this weird feeling and I was like, mm, something doesn't feel right. Now, maybe I need to preface. So I, I went through like a spiritual awakening, I guess you could say several years ago. And um, it's funny because I, I, I couldn't figure out what to call it. I called it a spiritual journey, but then I realized it was a, an awakening. Because while I've always been Christian and I always felt like I was awoke, <laughs> why, why the quotes? I always felt like I was awake to things of Christ, awake to things of the Bible, awake to the Holy Spirit, awake to God, awake to, you know, the feelings around me and then I realized a few years ago that I was far off base um, from being actually like awaken and uh, and I feel like ever since then <laughs> it's just been like it's just been kind of crazy so ever since then I've had a lot of um, experiences that have to do with spirits with orbs, with sounds, with feelings, with I'm definitely an empath. I've always been an empath my whole life, but I pushed it aside and called and called it all my fault. Like it's your fault that, you know, come on lady, just hang out with this person and be more tolerant of that person. Still hang out with them if they drain you or whatever, like like give them more. I felt like it was always my fault. Like when I avoided someone or didn't want to help someone because it hurt me, I thought it was my fault, so I gave more, which ended up hurting me, you know, and then I look back and go, that's because I, I'm an empath and I need my time away and I need to recharge and, and people's energies do affect you and there are such things as energy vampires. And I know there's been times where I've been an energy vampire and that's why I can say that. So since I've been on this like spiritual awakening and this spiritual journey, like, like, I feel like I've become much more in tune with things around me and with the energies of those around me. There are times where, like, I'm too busy to, like, pay attention. And then there are other times where I feel like it, like, punches me in the gut and I can feel it. I don't tell you this story to, uh, to boast. Because once you hear the story, I don't think you're gonna wish that, <laughs> that this happened to you. But I'm gonna tell it to you guys anyway. Um, and maybe I'll post it. Now, I've noticed that the inside of my eye here is pink and um, we were at the pool yesterday and, and this eye too is a little pink. We were at the pool for like four and a half, five hours yesterday and the sun was intense. It, like it wasn't just hot, it was like intense. I remember being like an hour at the pool and, and just like my eyes feeling like, I, I remember telling my friend I feel like my eyes are being sunburned. Or maybe it was my daughter I told that to. So we were at this cabin and we were looking around. We unload our stuff into the cabin. We go out and we go fishing and it was like a ton of fun. And we get back home. We go out to eat and, and stuff and we get back home and we go to bed. I want to say it was my dream that came first. So what happened was, and I can't really remember everything about my dream, but um, I remember standing in an area. I don't even know if it was a room or if it was outside or whatnot. And before me was a man and a woman. And I don't remember how they look, but they had great presence. They, they were average height, but I felt like their presence and their energy made them seem taller and bigger and stronger, if that makes sense. And I stood there as they began to inform me of their life and they said I have been through this and I've been through this and I've been through this all t terrible horrible things and every time they said what they went through they threw that feeling on me and it, you know empaths you know we can feel things and then we can kind of like put up a guard or we can leave this came so fast this man and woman throwing things and here I'm hearing and feeling 
the things that they all went through, the both of them went through, that it was like I did not have time to even um, to get up and leave. Like I was stuck and like every every time they threw an emotion at me, it like tore, it like took me down more and more and more. And it was almost like they were like beating me with their emotions and um, and with these like past painful feelings and and uh, situations they were in and abuse that they had been through. I remember like laying on the ground and had this thought that was like they pretty much beat me and left me for dead because I was buried. I felt like I was literally buried under all this pain and all this emotion and I couldn't move. I was in, I was in so much pain. My body was aching. Like I felt like I was physically beat to crap as I'm laying here on the ground, buried in all of their emotions. And I felt like they really wanted to make that known, all these things, and it made them feel better to know that I knew these things. I've read in several places that spirits know who can hear them, and spirits know who will be receptive. I have been informed that if they know you can hear them, <laughs> they're going to go to you. Um, I've, I've heard stories too where spirits have tried coming to a loved one, and they won't listen, so they go to someone close close enough in relation or a close friend or whatever who hears them who can deliver the message. So I could not move and I like mustered out the words. Now to preface, I am Christian as I mentioned and I believe in Christ and I believe in the power of Christ and I believe in the power of God and I believe in the power of the universe. Um, and I barely muster out the question like I think I just opened my mouth and the words just came because I, I I don't even recall thinking these words they just came out and I said why are you putting all these emotions on me so that you will feel better when you can give all of this to Christ and he will make you feel better and he will make you whole and then after that like it released all that pain and all that stuff like it just kind of like came up and then was removed I woke up, I can't remember if it was 2, two o'clock or three, 2 o'clock in the morning, with my shirt drenched in sweat, completely drenched. Now this shirt's like, I don't know if you can see, it's a pretty thin cotton shirt. The shirt that I wore to bed is this one, and it's, it's pretty thick. It's, um, it's, I love it because it, there's a slight weight to it, and because it has that slight weight to it, I like how it how it hangs on my body. I feel like it looks a little more pleasing, but there's weight to this shirt. I woke up with it drenched, completely drenched. I remember like peeling it off my chest. And now I've had night sweats before. I think we've all experienced night sweats and, or when we've been like super sick, but this was more than just the average night sweat. It was like, like, oh, my whole upper half was just drenched. I am laying there in bed and I look over and now the, th it was thundering outside at the time too. Um, I love how like the coincidence of that. Um, I look over and my bedroom door opens and <laughs> it's funny because I was telling this to my friend and my friend's like I would have freaked out and I said you know what had it been a few years ago I probably would have. I probably would have awakened my husband and been like the door opened itself. Now it could have opened it could not okay even though I I and going through the spiritual awakening, I do try to see things from a realistic perspective as well. Maybe I'm not supposed to be doing that. Maybe that hinders my my spiritual growth. But at the same time too, I have to say it because it could just be. The cabin's up on stilts. At least part of it is. Like, like the front half of it was kind of up on stilts. It could have been the thunder shaking the house and that could have been what opened the door. But the door opened and I looked at the door opening and I was like, um, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is really happening right now. And I prayed that whatever is going on, you know, whatever is like residual and hanging out in this area or it, where, however far out it extends, that it will, um, that, that those spirits or that energy will find peace, will find Christ, will find God, the universe, whatever it needs to heal and to be cleared and to just have that peace to move on, you know. 
And at that moment, I suddenly saw that area that I was at probably 200, 250 years ago and that it was all slavery. Now, <laughs> to confess, I know very little about history. History has never been my strong suit. Um, I know probably a little bit more about my like family history, uh, but I never like was well versed in history and especially Texas history. So I looked it up the next day and East Texas was well known for the, the slavery. You know, I, I was talking about this with my friend and now before I went to bed, I always pray, I always pray that we will be okay, that that anything negative will be out of this bubble of Christ's or God's love, um, white light, that kind of stuff, you know, a little bubble that it'll all stay outside. I always pray that my protector angel is at the front to protect and that my warrior angels are like around the whole bubble to just make sure that we're just in good hands. And I prayed for my kids too because my kids weren't at the um, at the cabin with me at that time. And of course when they're not with me I always pray for their protection as well and um, found that God didn't honor that prayer, at least not in the way that I would have expected it. So the big question is, you know, why didn't God answer that prayer? And, you know, a lot of people get frustrated because God doesn't answer the pr our prayers at all or how we want. I think it boils down to what God knows we can do and the betterment that he has in mind for us. And, you know, a brief little history, like, and not to like, like, this is like the best example I could come up with. Um, something happened to me back in middle school. I was sexually harassed by one of my teachers and I said nothing to anyone about it until two years later when I was uh, with a couple of my friends who had him also as a teacher and it came up and it was like, what? This happened to you too? This happened to you too? Like, what's going on? And a friend of ours said, this is not okay. It's not okay for your teacher to have done that. And we went and informed our parents and then the uh, teacher, he took early retirement instead of um, being terminated and my mom told me how she struggled with the fact that that even happened to me and she got the answer that it happened to me because I would do something about it two years later <laughs> and and she told that to me back like in middle school and I remember thinking dude I'm like the wimpiest person ever like I don't I don't care for confrontation I don't go out of my way to do it. <laughs> like like I feel like I just blow with the wind as I've gotten older I've realized that a lot of times things have fallen into my lap because I will do something about it and I'm not again I'm not trying to say that I'm great by any stretch of the imagination but I often wondered why you know here if I prayed for protection like hello why didn't it happen and I thought you know what maybe I needed to go there to help clear that energy and to help to help those who have been stuck in that mode for 200 plus years find peace one thing that, that this is just completely like you can take it or leave it because I, I'm kind of at this like I don't really know so the first day that we were there like we didn't see any deer any anything we're seriously like in the middle of nowhere you guys and there's like nothing around there's no like I think we saw like a squirrel you know maybe a bird but like there was no deer there were no hogs there were no like because there's wild hogs there's like nothing and my husband kept saying, I'm so surprised we're not seeing any deer. And I would joke around and be like, because it's the energy. The energy is weird here. <laughs> like, it's just weird. Like, if I can feel it, animals can definitely feel this. Come on now. After I cleared the area, we started seeing deer. Again, that could have been, like, realistically thinking, it could have just been that, hey, the deer were a little spooked that we were there and then, you know, kind of eased up a little bit and started showing up a little bit more. Who knows? Now, to let you guys know, the trip was freaking incredible. I absolutely loved it. I have been seriously craving the outdoors, especially since like April, May-ish. It was around the end of the school year. Like every day I was going outside and for like an hour and a half. And I feel like that trip was exactly that. It was like I was outdoors a lot and I would just sit outside and just not think at all and just like soak in 
the outdoors. I absolutely, the trip was wonderful. It was like everything that my spirit needed. Granted, yes, there was that part of it. But I thought I would share with you guys that story um, and uh, get your thoughts on it. And, um, and if you've had anything similar and yeah, so thought I would share. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. I don't think I am, but, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Catch you on the flip. Bye guys.